Okay, we're going to start out with identifying our landmarks. We're going to begin with the proximal tibia. So the easiest way to find this is to find the patella or the patient's kneecap going directly down the anterior portion of the shin until you feel this bump of a bone called the tibial tuberosity. Once you find that tibial tuberosity, you're going to go one finger breath medial. Remember at 3 o'clock in the morning, you might not remember medial from lateral, so remember big toe I.O. So now that we've identified our landmark, Dr. Edelson is going to come in and insert the I.O. Okay, the landmark has already been identified, so Dr. Edelson is going to prep the skin. You're going to use whatever your institution uses for IV insertions. In this institution, they use alcohol swab. He's prepped the skin and he's going to give it about five seconds to dry. He's then going to pop the top of the sterile container. It is a magnetized tip, so he's going to put that on there. In order to get the cap off, he'll twist it and then remove the cap. He's going to be approaching the bone at a 90 degree angle, piercing the skin. You can still see the black mark, so he knows that he has enough depth to his needle. At this time, he's going to pull the trigger. Perfect. Hang on to the bottom of it, remove the driver, just lift straight up. And then you're going to undo the stylet. Okay, perfect. At this time, you may or may not see blood coming back up through the hub here. If your nurses need to obtain labs, you can take our low profile tubing that will not be primed with lidocaine or with saline, attach that on as a lure lock, you're going to withdraw with your CC, uh, with your syringe, about three to five cc's as a discard. If you're running coags, you want to discard at least 10 cc's of blood. I have prepped or uh, primed my tubing here with 2% cardiac lidocaine. This is a lidocaine that is approved for IV use because it's epinephrine free and preservative free. The concentration of this is 20 milligrams per cc. For our adults, we typically typically give 20 to 40 milligrams of lidocaine. That is sufficient for most patients um, to avoid that pain when that medullary space is expanding. If your patients continue to have pain after that, let your physicians know and then they can re repeat the dose of the lidocaine. This is lure locked. I'm just going to attach it on here like this. Now you're going to give the concentration of this lidocaine slowly because we're trying to marinate the inside of the bone. So I'm just going to be slowly infusing 40 milligrams, which is 2 cc's, giving it over about a 15 to 30 second period. Now again, this is only for our awake and alert patients. Any patients that are obtunded or in extremis, we would be bypassing this step. And again, it's a painfully long period of time for EMS and emergency folk, but we do it over about 15 to 30 seconds. And then give it probably another 15 to 30 seconds afterwards to make sure that it's going to numb the bone. As our patient can probably explain, what was the pain on a scale of 0 to 10 for insertion? Uh, insertion was probably about a uh, three, and the infusion of the lidocaine is probably about a seven, six or seven. Or an eight. <laughs> <laughs> but actually not that bad. If you do, when you do it slowly like that, it works pretty well. After the lidocaine is infused, you're then going to clamp off your tubing and you're going to take your 10 cc um, normal saline, of course, just like you would with any infusion, clearing the air out of it. Again, it's lure locked and it's still sterile so I don't need to clean the cap. I'm going to release my clamp. Now this is probably the most important part for the insertion. In order to pop open that medullary space, you need to give a rapid flush. 
pretty close to my 30 seconds now that my lidocaine's been infused. I'll give it a few more seconds. Okay, Jim, you ready? Yep. Okay, the best way to do this is to put the heel of your hand on here and give it as a rapid flush that's going to give you your best flow rates. Okay, then I can clamp this off. So that, that pain was probably about a seven or eight, but it was only for a few seconds, and then once you stop the flush, it, it went away. Again, this is clamped. I'm going to unscrew that, put my tubing on here, unclamp it, open it, and I have great flow rates. How's that pain now, Jim? Yeah, I, don't, I don't feel much. Excellent. Okay, in order to remove it, the first thing that you're going to do is roll down your slide clamp of your IV so you don't have a bath for you or for your patient. You're going to then clamp the tubing here, and again, you're going to take a sterile syringe. You're going to unlure lock your tubing here, and you can discard it. Now, at this time, you might have a little bit of flow um, back from that medullary space, and that's okay. You're going to put your syringe on, and then what you're going to do with a twisting motion, you're going to stabilize the patient's leg, and you're twisting and you're pulling at the same time. And for patients that are young and healthy and have nice, tight cortexes of their bone, it takes a little bit to come off. And then I'm going to take an alcohol swab here and just apply a little bit of pressure. How was that pain for removal, Jim? I felt nothing. I removed it. Okay. 